My very first computer was a Radio Shack color computer, 16K of memory. 386, x 6 Commodore 64. It's definitely a Macintosh. Dell Inspiron. It was fun to break it. <laughs> Uh, what do I get geeky with? Everything about me is geeky, I think. <laughs> What's not geeky? I write code for fun. I'm actually teaching my children to, um, we're going to try and program the Roomba. I actually build and sell these uh, electronic modules that, uh, that people use and put in custom lightsabers, like a six degree of freedom sensor in there now with a gyro and accelerometer combo. And, uh, it can track the motion pretty well. I'm working on trying to make a tie that has LEDs that react to the, the sound around it. I wouldn't wear it in the rain. <laughs> I'd wear it to holiday parties. <laughs> I really like building things when I was a kid. I want to understand the inner workings of computers. Taking the side panel off the computer, going in and, and figuring out what all the pieces were. I destroyed a few things in the process. The number of broken toys I had as a child was pretty significant. When I was really little, I saw R2-D2. I was really fascinated with how they could actually make this work. I first got started in software development uh, in second grade at computer camp. I remember my middle school wanting to do, was talking about a talent show, and I came to my parents and said, hey, I'm really talented at computer programming, maybe we can do that. And they just went, no. No, you can't, that's not something that people will enjoy. Software development was always my hobby. I can do my hobby <laughs> and get money for that. <laughs> I just knew that that was it for me. Like, this is like insanely cool, I'm gonna keep doing it. Please welcome your host for Devs on Stage, our Chief Development Officer, Andrew Beers. Hello again, Austin, and welcome to almost the end of the first day of TC16. How was it? You guys having fun? All right, all right. Well, we have a lot more in store for you this week, including this session, which has been a conference favorite for the nine years that we have held TC. And we call it Developers On Stage. <laughs> Woo! You know, this conference is a highlight of every year for me because I am a die-hard product and technology guy. I love from he hearing from all of you how you take our products and do amazing things with them. You are all changing the world. One viz, one insight, one story at a time, and I'm excited to be part of it. But it's not just me. There are over 600 people from the product development team here this week, and they're just as excited to spend time with you as I am. So if you see us, stop and talk with us. We would love to geek out with you about data and analysis and mobile devices and building data-driven organizations together. Well, that brings us to this session where we take the most passionate people from the team and put them in front of you and let them gush with excitement about the stuff they have built for you. This morning, we showed you our vision, those things we want to bring to the platform over the next couple of years. But this session, this session is about now. You're going to see a bunch of new things in the next hour that you're going to get your hands on over the next few releases, including 25 things that you requested on the Ideas Forum and voted for 1,500 times. So thank you. Thank you for participating in the forum. It really helps us out. So this session is about all of you and what you want. So are you ready? Do you want to see some cool stuff? All right, come on out, Dev Team. All right, remember, if you see stuff that you like, wave those colored things in the air and, and, and make a lot of noise. Let them know. OK. The magic of Tableau has always been how easy it is to ask and answer questions and communicate in ways that leverage your most powerful sense, vision. So I am super excited to turn things over to developer extraordinaire Mariki Katema who will show you some new things that will make your inner data rock star say, that's awesome. Knock him dead.
Thanks, Andrew. TC16. Are you ready to rock and roll? And Kwan Dahnamet Achu. That is welcome in my first language, Amharic, from Ethiopia. Now my name, my name is Maraki, and if you run into me sometime this week, I guarantee you'll mess up my name. Everyone does. You'll probably call me Makari, Mariki, Marky Mark. Listen, I don't even look like that dude. But we'll figure it out. I'm an engineer on the analytics team, and as a team, our mission is to empower all of you to leverage analytical tools like visualizations, maps, and statistics to answer important questions about your data. That is why I am absolutely thrilled to show you all the great advancements coming to Tableau Analytics. To get started, raise your hand if you've ever used a map in Tableau. I know I have. Now you know that when you're looking at states, you want to see information about states. And when you're looking at cities, you want to see data about your cities. Well, we are bringing you a brand new feature that will reveal more detail about your data as you zoom. We call it automatic drill. Let me show you. Here's a map of the United States showing physical activity. Right now, we are at the state level of detail. The most active states are in blue and the most inactive states in green. But I want more detail. Let's zoom in. Tableau has just automatically changed my level of detail to county. Let's see another example. Here's a sample of Tableau public page views around the world. Now it looks like the United States has a lot of page views. Let's zoom in. And now I can see page views by state. But did, did anyone notice what else happened when I zoomed? That's right. We are adding map scale. This is one of the most requested maps features from the forums. Thank you so much for your feedback. But let's get back to our analysis. Now it looks like Tableau Public has a lot of fans in Texas. I wonder where all those page views are coming from. So I click the zoom. And now we are looking at postal code level data for Texas. I can easily see that most of the page views are coming from Houston, Dallas, and yes, Austin, Texas. With automatic drill, I was able to zoom into three levels of detail with only my mouse. Easy. And look what else happened. Map scale adjusted as well. Let's talk about another feature. Last year, we told you about the work we're doing around a spatial file connector. You have spatial files that contain important geographic information like school districts, police precincts, neighborhoods, that you want to access quickly with a native spatial file connector. Let me remind you of what spatial files can do. Now, I want to understand how climate zones affect corn production in sub-Saharan Africa. I've already brought in my shape file using the spatial file connector. So let's put it to use. I'll add geometry to the viz, climate zone to color, and the viz says it all. Distinct shapes denoting distinct climate zones. What an absolute beauty. But let's, let's quickly answer the question we started with. Which climate zone is best for corn production? Now that, my friends, is data eye candy. 
And it's so useful. I can quickly tell that the subhumid region, the dark green area, is best for corn production. I'm so pleased to announce that the brand new spatial file connector will be coming to you in the 10-2 beta. Let's shift gears. I'd like to talk about statistics in Tableau. Now, many of you are already doing advanced analytics. Others of you have interns that do this for you. I wish I had an intern. But chances are you're using Python, which is a programming language that's often used for machine learning and advanced analytics. But you want to be able to interact with your Python models live in Tableau. You want Tableau to be your one-stop shop for all your analytical needs. Well, you will have this with Python integration. Let me show you. Here I have data on tweets that contain the hashtag data15 from last year's conference. Now, this data was collected by one of our customers, Keith Helfrich. Thanks, Keith. I've or we've already pre-computed sentiment analysis on this data. Let me show it to you. This is Python code embedded in a Tableau calculation. Yes. Now, in my viz, I have an hour by hour breakdown of sentiment. Here's the data on positive tweets, neutral, and negative tweets. Now, if you all recall, Devs on Stage was on a Tuesday last year. And what do you know? Tuesday has the highest number of positive tweets. No wonder we're back. With Python integration, you can leverage the statistical power of Python inside Tableau. Interaction with your Python models is but one calculation away. Now, this morning, Andrew gave you a peek into our long-term vision for analytics. We are executing on this vision. Let me show you the current state of tooltip selection. Here I have a data dashboard that contains data on Broadway. Let's play around with this dashboard. I wonder what's going on with this point. When I click, the tooltip tells me that the show is Hamilton, that it's considered to be a mega hit, that it's still open on Broadway, and that it's a musical. But I can also see that this show has made over $119 million in sales. That's a lot of Benjamins. I wonder how the mega hits are doing. With tooltip selection, you can now select a categorical field from any tooltip. Watch. I click on mega hits and bam, all the mega hits are selected. All the mega hits are selected, the business at the bottom have adjusted, and I can quickly tell that the mega hits have made over $12 billion. But what about the shows currently on Broadway? I can now see all the shows that are currently in Bro on Broadway, and that they've made over $5 billion in sales. I'm having fun. Let's do one more. Hey, Tableau, where are all my musicals at? And whoa, there are so many musicals. And look, they've made over $10 billion in sales. I definitely need to keep this viz for when I travel to New York. With tooltip selection, you can now uncover all the hidden insights in your data. But when you want to focus your analysis, you need to filter your data. Date filters are a very useful and powerful part of your analytic journey. But you want more flexibility. In fact, over 800 of you have voted for better controls because you want your workbooks to be automatically filtered to the latest date.
You're currently solving this today with parameters and complex calculations, but there's got to be an easier way. Let me show you what we're working on. Here's a dashboard showing UFO sightings and other information on alien encounters. Yes. <laughs> I look at this viz on a pretty regular basis because it would be so cool to meet an alien like E.T. Or ALF? Yeah. Right now, my date filter tells me that the data is from yesterday, November 7th, 2016. But when I come back to this view, after a data update, my filter should have the latest date selected. Let's go in and add our data. My data currently lives on Google Sheets. I will paste in 20 rows of data for today, November 8th, 2016. Now, watch the filter as I reload the viz. Get ready for sweetness. Tableau is grabbing the new data, redrawing the viz, and look. My filter just automatically adjusted to the latest date. We call this filter presets. It's not magic. Let me show you how we made this possible. Here's the sheet where the filter lives. If I go to the edit filter dialog, notice that we've added a brand new tab. It's called presets. And on this tab, I've selected latest date value. This, this is all you have to do. Yes. This is all you have to do to get your filters to update with your data. Your viz will now always be current. But we're also doing really exciting work around viz creation. Now, not all data changes continuously. You want to visualize discrete changes, especially in trends over time. Here's a viz that has data on 100 meter Olympic records. But this viz is a little confusing. I can't easily tell how long a record is held or what the changes are between records. To answer these questions, I need to specify a different type of line. Coming soon to Tableau, we will be able to do just that with the introduction of step and jump lines. Let me show you. We've added a brand new way to specify your lines. Here's the, the original line, here's a step line, and here's a jump line. When I select step lines, I can quickly see what the changes in magnitude are. And when I select jump lines, I can see how long each record is held before it's broken. Yes. Take a look at the bottom viz for female Olympians. Look at the latest record. It hasn't been broken since 1988. Marky Mark wasn't even funky then. With step and jump lines, you can now build a viz that best fits your data, but guess what else you can do? City skylines in Tableau are just a few clicks away. Look at the beautiful Austin skyline. Let's go back to basics. Here's the original viz, the highlight table, and this is basketball data. For each player, we have information on their age, total number three-pointers, three-point accuracy, and average minutes played. But this legend isn't really working for us. There's such a huge range of values on the screen, and yet they're all in one legend. For example, total number three-pointers is in the thousands, and average three-point percentage is but a percentage. What I need is four different color legends. We're making this possible with a feature we like to call legend per measure. Yeah. 
I'll go to the measure values pill on color and select use separate legends. And now my legends are automatically separated. Each legend now has its own quantitative range and color encoding. Take a look at Steph Curry. Not only is he the youngest player, but he also has the highest accuracy when it comes to three-pointers. Wow. This is a huge improvement. We are making highlight tables great again. <laughs> We're continuing on our mission to make data analysis and viz creation a fast, easy, beautiful process. With these new features, you'll be able to see your data the way you want to, explore your data with ease, and author visits with a scope as dynamic as your data. But analyzing your data and finding insights is but the first step. You need to be able to present and share your insights with the world. And to tell you more about the advancements we're making in this area, please welcome fellow data enthusiast and cat lover, Steph Dietzel. Hi, I'm Steph, and when I started working at Tableau, I was a normal person. But that changed. I am in the Data Viz Nerd Club now. So I really care what makes a great visualization. You've got data, analysis. Those are essential, but they're not enough. A great viz needs to engage with its audience, communicate ideas, and inspire a conversation. And to do that, it needs good design. OK. I have a programming background, so I started to research. What is good design? I found that designers make a series of small choices about things like white space and alignment and typography that creates a cumulative effect to help support their message. And we can use these same principles in data visualization, which is why I'm so excited to share with you a collection of tools that will bring out the artist in all of us. This is a dashboard about London's Heathrow Airport. It's pretty busy with 75 million travelers. I would love to be one of them. Let's look at this dashboard through a designer's eye. My friend Britta is a real life designer, and she told me that spacing and alignment are the key to an effective design. OK, well, right away, I can see that the spacing between my summary numbers is not even. This is sloppy, it's distracting me, and I frankly cannot unsee this. <laughs> I could pick up every separator manually and try and eyeball exactly the right proportion, or I could let Tableau do it for me. I'll select the container that holds all of them, open the context menu, and here, called Distribute Evenly. Watch as I apply this. The spaces are even, and my dashboard is balanced in one click. And now that we don't have that distracting us, what else can we see? I noticed that these titles are a little too close to the edge, and this map and this bar chart, they're just too snuggly. I want to control the spacing on this dashboard. 
And there are actually two kinds of spacing. There's margin, which is the space outside of an object, and padding, which is the space inside of an object. And designers use these terms all the time. That's why we're adding new tools in the Layout tab to help me control these. I'll select my dashboard, and now let's add some margin around the entire thing. I'll open the margin tool and add 30 pixels. Watch as I apply this. Yeah. It's a happy little margin. But I don't have to do all four sides. I can do individual ones as well. So I'll select my map, open the margin tool, and add 30 pixels just on the right. And they're unsnuggled. <laughs> OK. Feeling pretty good about this dashboard. Let's frame this masterpiece like the beauty that it is. I'm going to open our border tool. And coming soon, you'll be able to add a border to any object on your dashboard. So I'll, <laughs> I'll quickly add a border. Oh, and the border looks awesome, but did you guys notice a problem? These are too close again. It's actually OK, because we have that padding tool. I'll add 30 pixels, and it looks great. We had precise control over every pixel in this dashboard. Is there any possible way we could make this more informative, useful, and beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> this dashboard has text on it, like almost every dashboard ever. And that's why we are adding expressive text controls to Tableau. Let me show you an example. I'll open the title. Let's get rid of this H. I'll bring in a fun graphic to remind us that this is about travel. And while we're here, I'm going to hyperlink this entire thing to the Heathrow Airport. All right. Our expressive text controls are not just inline images and hyperlinks. They're also bulleted lists, columnar layouts, horizontal rules, kerning adjustments, and more. And they're coming everywhere there's text in Tableau, like titles, captions, text objects, tooltips. Text, text is just one more tool to help bring your creative visions to life. Tableau has always been a tool for everybody. You don't have to be a specialist to analyze your data. And now you don't have to be an artist to create beautiful, professional dashboards that you are proud to share. Well, well, everything I've showed you so far is on Tableau Desktop. But we know that many of you are using Tableau Server and Tableau Online. Being able to ask and answer questions on the web is powerful. Later this week, our customer Sprint will talk about their deployment of Tableau Server. In their environment, every user has access to published data sources, template workbooks, and web authoring as part of a self-service strategy. They can quickly ask and answer their own questions and explore data right from the browser. They have created thousands of views via web authoring. And our advancements in web authoring will let them and all of you do more on the web. Well, I like wine and I like the web, so I put some wine on the web. <laughs> Let's fix up this dashboard with six of my favorite things you could never do before. First, I want to use my own custom map box background, so I'll quickly apply it. 
Next, I think these month headers are not really helping us. I'm going to go to the sheet and hide them. And while I'm here, just because I can, I'm going to add a reference line. Let's check out how our dashboard is doing now. OK, it's starting to look good. But I can't quite read all of these headers, so I'll just resize them. And finally, I want to see on this scatter plot every piece of data in my data source, so I'll quickly disaggregate my data. And right away, I can see that Napa is crushing it. And you've told us you need to format more on the web, including numbers. That's why we're bringing number formatting to the web. I'll open our number formatter tool and quickly apply a dollar sign. Now, these were six small features, but they kept me in my flow. And with every release, we are adding more ways to use Tableau without leaving your browser. And there's one more thing that you've asked us for. Story points on the web. You've told us the people who build and publish dashboards are not always the people who present and persuade with them. Our Zen master, Mark Jackson at Piedmont Healthcare, tells us that the doctors and nurses love their dashboards and data, but they need the flexibility to create a dashboard or story right before they walk into a meeting. And they need to do this on the web. Well, soon they will be able to. Let me show you. Here is a story about California's wine. I can quickly click through it, and I'll double click to add my final point. And we're not just bringing story authoring to the web, we are improving it, which is why on the Layout tab, we're adding new controls so I can pick the navigator that works best for the data. We've got captions, dots, numbers. I'll choose numbers and turn off the arrows. And my story is ready to share. And when you want to share your data, you want the focus to be on your viz, which is why we've just released a new web full screen mode, which lets you do just that. <laughs> web authoring is getting more powerful with every release. And all those new design tools for spacing and alignment and borders and text, those are coming to the web as well. So you can communicate your insights and tell your data stories anywhere. We are so excited to support the creativity of every person in this room. And we can't wait to get these features into your hands. And speaking of data in your hands, please welcome Britta, one of our wonderful designers for mobile. Hey everybody, thank you Steph. Hi, I'm Britta and I'm a designer on our app, Tableau Mobile, and I am so excited to show you what we've been up to. On the mobile team, we spend a lot of time thinking about how we all need to stay connected to our work and to our friends and family. My family lives up in Alaska, and while you can't quite see Russia from our house, it is way up there. But if someone in my family wants to get in touch with me, my phone goes ding. And isn't having your phone go ding basically the organizing principle of modern society? So let me show you some of the features we're adding to Tableau Mobile to help you stay connected. The first thing I'm going to show you is something we call direct linking. It lets you go from a link directly into the app. Let's say I manage a website, and I use Tableau to track my page views. Here's my inbox. It looks like I have an email from Tableau alerting me that my page views are way down. Let me just open it. OK, there's an image. That's helpful. But there's a link. All I need to do is just tap 
view in Tableau Mobile, and immediately the app opens right up directly to my Viz. Since the app keeps me logged in, I don't need to pick a server, no messing around with usernames, no remembering passwords, and no searching in a browser. And now that you're in the app, you have full interactivity at your fingertips. This is direct linking. The app is already the best place to see your data on a phone, but we're making it even better. I can see from this line graph that, yeah, my overall page views are way down, but I need to investigate more. Down here, each row represents a different page on my website. But the information I want, the name of the page and the exact number of views, is in the tooltip. But do you guys know what's so lame? Poking around, trying to select small marks. It can be so hard to get the one you want, especially if you have giant hands like me. It's like throwing a dart at a dartboard blindfolded. So we've built a way to get at this information that's completely natural. We've made smooth tooltips for mobile. It's so easy. You just put your finger down, hold, and see that little crosshairs that appears above my finger? That's your guide, showing you what mark you're selecting. Start moving around, and you get this beautiful tooltip. Here, docked to the bottom of your dashboard, which is ideal for small screens. It's so easy to compare marks. Oh, here I can see that there's some pages that are really low, and oh, from the tooltip, I can see that I have zero page views at all, and they're all in the learning section. There must be something wrong. Isn't mobile all, er, learning, <laughs> isn't mobile all about staying connected? If you want to communicate an insight like this out to others, you want to, okay. <laughs> if I want to brag to my family that I nailed this demo in front of 12,000 people, I'll send my dad a text and I'll send my little brother a Snapchat. You saw in the vision keynote that we're adding a whole new commenting experience to Tableau. And we're bringing those changes to the app. That's right, commenting right from the app. Let's just see what people are saying. All I have to do is select comments from our new redesigned toolbar. And, oh, great. I can see that my team has already found the problem and is fixing it. Let me just quickly respond. Cool. Sunglass emoji. Commenting on the go. Another great way to stay connected with Tableau Mobile. We're polishing the app to be as smooth, fast, and easy as possible. The best mobile experience for your data. But there's just one more thing. You have to be able to get to your data anywhere, anytime. No matter what you're doing, where you are, or how bad the Wi-Fi connection is. When I visit my family up in Alaska, they still have dial-up. That's why we've brought you for the first time ever, offline interactivity. Yeah. Now, you're going to be able to see your data with no network connection at all, totally offline. It's smooth and it's fast. Do you guys, do you want to see it? Yeah. Should I go into airplane mode? OK, here we go, airplane mode. And the app works just the same. Here's a dashboard about global temperature change. This is the offline snapshot, which has been available in the app for a while. But now, I just tap, and the app loads an interactive version of my Viz, and I can start asking questions. No Wi-Fi connection necessary. Let me show you how tooltips work offline. They're so fast, just like if you were connected, super responsive with all the information you need. 
Here's an outlier, 1878. That's interesting. But what if I want to see all the Februaries? The data highlighter will help me out with this. I just search February, and there. I can see 166 years of Februaries right on my phone. You can hardly tell you're not connected. Here's another dashboard that really shows off what you can do with offline. Again, the tooltips are fast and responsive, whether the mark is big or small. And I can highlight the categories I'm interested in just by tapping the legend. It's so cool. OK, now let's look at the mobile version of Steph's wine viz. If you guys liked wine on the web, you're going to love wine on your phone. <laughs> I can explore these marks and see from the tooltip where each wine came from. Or I just tap the map, and it highlights all the wines from that region. Isn't that awesome? I thought so. And don't forget, I was offline for that whole thing. Selections, tooltips, legends, and highlighting all work offline. It's just as fast as being connected, and we know it's going to revolutionize the way you use Tableau Mobile. We're adding direct linking, smooth tooltips, commenting, and offline interactivity. And of course, this is all coming to Android as well. And we're just getting started. We're constantly investing to make your mobile experience amazing. So whether you're 30,000 feet in the air or out in the snowy Arctic tundra, you're going to be able to stay on top of your data right where you are. Thank you so much. And I hope you're as excited about Tableau's fast, anytime, anywhere mobile features as we are. But before you can have your data on your phone, you have to get your data into Tableau. And to tell you more about that, I'd like to introduce my favorite Seahawks fan, Zahira. I'm a development manager at Tableau. Like many of you, I'm a data geek. I love data. I love Tableau. I love our customers. I love my son, Aiden. And when my team is not throwing passes from the one yard line in the Super Bowl, I love football. <laughs> not in that order, of course. Today, I'm so excited to show you the great new features we've been working on for data preparation and data access. Let's start with the improvements we've made with joins. How many times do you run across data sets where the schemas don't match? You want to combine the data, but you have to spend hours updating spreadsheets or chasing your database admin. Not anymore. As I was preparing for this demo, my five-year-old son, Aiden, was working on a project for school on what he wants to be when he grows up. He couldn't decide between an NFL player or an astronomer. I'm rooting for astronomer, but I don't want to dash his dreams just yet. He's only five. So, as any good data geek mom would do, we looked at data to see what will it take to get him to the NFL. <laughs> In this workbook, I have data on NFL players over the last five years. In this spreadsheet, I have college football players and the colleges they've played for over the last 10 years. My question, if Aiden's going to play in the NFL, what colleges are producing the highest number of NFL players? 
Using cross database join, we can combine these two data sets. However, there is a challenge. In this workbook, player name is split in two fields, first name and last name. In the NFL data set, player name is combined in one field, player. How can I join these two data sets when the fields don't match? Have you ever run into this? Now we have join on calculation. Yes. We have added the ability to create a join calculation so you can directly combine these two fields. Let's select the Excel file. We'll click on player. Let's click on create join calculation. Tableau enables me to add the calculation. And when I click on OK, just like that, the join works. Yes. With three easy clicks using join on calculation, we were able to combine these two data sets. Let's take a look at which colleges are producing the highest number of NFL players. I'm dragging number of players to columns. We'll add college to rows. And let's sort the data. If Aiden's going to be an NFL player, he needs to go to Alabama. Join on calculation works across different data sources, and it gives you the power to quickly join information without having to mess with the database. The next thing I'd like to show you are the great improvements to our union capabilities. Last year, we added one of the most requested features, the ability to union files through drag and drop. We're taking union to the next level. Coming soon, you'll be able to, through drag and drop, union tables that live in a database. That's right. Watch. In this workbook, I'm connected to a table in a SQL Server database that has NFL player salary data for 2011. Wow, that's a lot of money. If Aiden's going to be an NFL player, he might as well make a lot of money doing it. However, this is data for only one year. I want to look at the data over a longer time period. In the Data Source tab, I can see that this database has the salary information partitioned by year. Why can't we just drag and drop the tables to union like with files? You don't want to have to write custom SQL or follow up with your database admin. How long would that take? Now, with database union, just like with files, you can drag and drop the tables to union. Let's select the tables, and we'll drag. And as you can see from the shelf tables, the data is unioned. We just unioned tables in a database through drag and drop, no SQL required. Let's take a look at the data. Wow, look at that. If Aiden's going to sign with any team, he needs to sign with the Saints. With improvements to union and join, we are making it easier than ever to analyze data split across disparate data sources. Let's talk about data access now. You've asked for more data connectors. In 10.0, we added support for Google Sheets, Marketo, Presto, MemSQL. We are not stopping there. There are many other places data lives 
that you want to be able to use. We want to help unlock that value for you. Have you ever wanted to access some of the great data from a government website? There are over 30,000 data sets with rich information in PDF format on data.gov. And we know that PDFs are not designed for analysis. To analyze any one of these files, it would take a lot of tedious copying and pasting. Who wants to do that? With the new PDF connector coming soon, Yes, with the new PDF connector coming soon, you will be able to connect to these files directly in Tableau. With all the talk of football, I know there are probably quite a few of you getting thirsty for a beer. Let's take a look at an example. Here is a PDF file that has the per capita beer consumption by state. This is a 16-page PDF document. With the new PDF connector, I can connect directly to this file, and Tableau immediately recognizes the tables in the file. Here are 16 pages I didn't have to copy and paste. Once the data is in Tableau, you can work with it just like with data from any other data source. You can union the tables. You can change data types. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the data. Any guesses as to which state has the highest average consumption of beer? Sh shout out your guesses. Okay, I'm hearing Texas. Okay, I've added average consumption to columns. We'll add state to rows. And let's sort. I was, I was a little surprised that New Hampshire leads the charge. Maybe it's because they're trying to make up for not having an NFL team. With the PDF connector, in a matter of minutes, we directly connected to, transformed, and analyzed data from a PDF file. Imagine what you can do with your own data. I have some more cool things to show you. Many of you have been asking for JSON support. We've been working on that too. Last week, we shipped Tableau 10.1 with the new JSON connector. <laughs> JSON is a popular textual data format used for exchanging data in web and mobile applications. There's lots of information locked away in JSON files. Food truck data in San Francisco, traffic data in Chicago, data from sensors. The analytics team at one of our retail customers collects JSON data to understand and analyze their customer preferences. At home, we've been looking at JSON data too. Since I'm trying to encourage Aiden towards astronomy, we've been looking at space-related data sets. Let's be real. You see me on stage. My husband is 5'8". The NFL thing may be more than a stretch for Aiden. Here is a JSON file from data.gov that has information on meteorites and where they landed on Earth. If you want to analyze this data, you don't want to have to write a script or use another tool. You want to do it right away. With the new JSON connector, I can connect to this file. I'll select the file. 
And here you can see the new JSON level selector where you can select the levels you want to analyze. It looks really simple, right? But Tableau is doing a ton of work behind the scenes so you don't have to. We've inferred the schema so you don't need to write a script. We're showing you example data directly from the file so it's easy for you to identify what you want to analyze. Let's select location. And when you click on OK, your data is ready for analysis in Tableau. Let's fill out a visualization looking at where the various meteorites have landed on Earth. So I've added latitude and longitude. I'm adding name to shelf. Let's zoom in to where we are now in Texas. And here you can see JSON data alive in Tableau and lots of meteorites hitting Texas. Heads up this week, you don't want to get hit by a meteor. We want you to stay connected to more data sources. We want you to be able to prepare your data faster for analysis and ask and answer more questions. With the features I've shown you today, you can achieve this. And remember, it's always a good idea to use data to influence your kids' career choices. And now, I'd like to introduce you to Ben, your personal awesomeness coach. Nice. That was awesome, Zahira. You've been well coached. Man, I got to tell you, I'm glad my mom didn't have Tableau when I was a kid. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> my name's Ben Lauer. And I work on the extensibility team at Tableau because I love helping developers unleash their creativity and bring their crazy ideas to life. So let's get crazy. Right here? <laughs> Was it that bad? My, my team's responsible for Tableau's developer platform and APIs. Where are my devs in the audience? All right. Now, I realize many of you out there don't write code. You might be thinking, API? What the heck is an API? I can't even spell API. <laughs> well, even if you're not a developer, I'm going to show you some things that will save your company valuable time make your visas more accessible, and, well, are just awesome. This site is my playground. I've got this workflow. First, I play around and experiment with different visas, dashboards, and data sources. Then, once I get something dialed in that I really like, I promote it to my production site so I can share it more broadly. Finally, all of my promoted visas have to use real production data. So I want you to imagine, how would you do this? Would you manually download, edit, and republish everything? No way. You're going to get your friend in IT to help you? If you're lucky. I hate busy work. Doing tedious tasks is soul crushing. I love to automate things because it makes me feel productive and efficient. So let's automate my workflow. So again, this is my playground site, and I've got some workbooks that I'm ready to promote. So let me just select these three here, and I'm going to go over and tag them with the tag keeper. Save this. OK, we're good. So now let me show you my production site so you know that there's nothing here. We can see there's no workbooks currently on the site. And so now I'm going to switch over, 
And I'm going to go ahead and start this script, and I'll explain how it works as it's running. So what do we got going on here? We've got our Tableau server. We've got my username, my source site, and my destination site. Then we've got the tag, keeper. I've set delete to true. That means once I've migrated it to production, I'm going to delete it from the playground. And then finally, I've got a CSV file that contains a mapping of all my production data sources. So we could see some things have been happening here. Let's switch back over. Let's take a look at our production site. Let's refresh it. Go into our workbooks, and there we go. Things have been migrated. So how did I do this? Well, I used our brand spanking new server client library. It makes automating tedious tasks a breeze. In the past, if you used our REST API directly to publish a workbook, it took over 300 lines of code. With the Tableau server client, it's less than 20. I also used our new document API to repoint all of those workbooks and dashboards to use real production data. No more XML hacking. Yes! Is it hot in here? Maybe I'm just so amped from all that automation. All right. That's all I got. That's all I got. All right, so I just showed you how our APIs can be used to automate tedious tasks and retarget using production data sources. But now I want to show you something else. I want my analytics to come to me wherever I am. I want to embed Tableau in my own website. So here's a fictional performing arts university that I created. Now, for demo purposes here, I'm going to pretend that I work in the development office. That means a couple of my major tasks are getting donations to fund the school's programs and building relationships with new artists to get them involved with the school. Because I'm already signed in, I can go into the self-service analy uh, analytics page, and here we go. Right where my team is already spending our time, we've embedded Tableau deeply. Now, some of you are probably looking at this saying, hey, I can already do this with an HTML embed code. I'm going to show you some things you can't do with that code. So let's jump in here. We'll just take a look at this viz. And the first thing I want to show you is if we look over here to the left, we have a custom menu matched to the look and feel of our website. If I click on export to PDF, exactly what you would expect to Tableau, all the actions on the PDF available, again, right in my own site. Also over here, uh, we've got, this is actually my, my point where I was to tell you that we're adding high resolution image support to our REST API in our next release. So uh, if I had multiple sheets here, I could click on those and switch the view. Now, let me show you something else here. I'm going to go back and jump into favorites. So I've got a couple of my favorites here. And if I jump back to Tableau server, let's uh, refresh performing arts. and We'll go into workbooks. And I'm going to just go ahead and favorite this college. Uh, let's favorite college two over here. And we'll refresh the page. And there it is, deep embedding of Tableau in my own website. This code is 100. You can clap. This code is 100% client-side JavaScript. And this is now possible because we're adding support for both JSON and cores to our REST API. So now let me take a couple liberties to show you two of my favorite things. Music and awesome visuals. This is a viz I created using Tableau's Web Data Connector API to pull in tracks and artists from Spotify that have played at major music festivals recently. 
Now, I can, uh, obviously I could explore this viz just as like I would expect, but one of the things we added in 10.0 to the JavaScript API was something we called get data. That allows me as a developer to get all the data underneath this viz and integrate with a third party charting library like say D3. And just for fun, because we've got access to Spotify's data here, I can mouse over the album art. And we get a nice music preview as part of our viz. So I, let's back, back to my role in the development office. I'm coming down to Austin again in the spring to South by Southwest Music Festival. We're going to be adding some new acoustic programs at the school. So let me sort here by acousticness, and let's click on Agnes here. So let me show you uh, what's going on here in our viz. Agnes is the artist I'm targeting to build a relationship with. She's in orange. All the dark blue nodes represent artists with whom the school already has a relationship. So I can come up here and say, well, you know, maybe I want to kick it with Chance the Rapper, but he's pretty far removed from Laura or sorry, from Agnes, I just gave away the punchline. <laughs> and we click on Laura here, we can see they're playing together at South By. I can give Laura a call and help her, or have her help me pitch Agnes to get her involved with the school. All the code for this custom portal, along with this Spotify viz, is 100% open source. It's on GitHub right now for you to go get, use, and love. So far, I've shown you how our APIs can be used to enable automation. I just showed you how they can be used to embed Tableau deeply in a website. But just in case your minds have not been sufficiently blown by these possibilities, I have one more thing to show you. Earlier tonight, Britta showed you what the team has been doing to make Tableau's mobile app experience awesome. But we hear from you that you want to embed Tableau in your own mobile apps. I'm happy to show you something that we've just released. It's called the Mobile App Bootstrap. So this is an app that we made to look like it was for the Performing Arts University. All the things that someone from the school would need to do their job are right here in the app at their fingertips. But I want to draw your attention to the bottom. This is where, and not that far down, this is where we have our vizs that are most important. So I can click on the donations viz. I get it right here in my own mobile app so I can have this information anytime, anywhere at my fingertips. Whether you're brand new to mobile dev or you're a seasoned iOS developer, we have a flavor of the mobile app bootstrap for you. It also handles all the hard things like sign in and persisting those credentials over sessions. It's on GitHub now. You can go get it, and it's for you to have a fast start getting the Tableau content you care about most into your own apps. With our continued investment in Tableau's developer platform, you can automate tedious tasks, write less code, and embed your Tableau content anywhere. We are serious about open source. We want your feedback, and we want your pull requests. To all the developers in the audience here tonight, we've got a couple hidden secrets right here tonight in Austin. This text should be your starting point. So now, ladies and gentlemen, unleash your code. And now I ask my fellow devs on stage to stand up and join me. We toast you for joining us in Austin. And we are going to do that with an ice cold Andrew Beers. <laughs> nice. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Not bad. Wow, that was amazing, and this is pretty good. Thank you, Marky, Steph, Britta, Zahira, and Ben. Wasn't that amazing? Didn't you guys like that? Wasn't that a great show? All right. So I just want to remind you, these five amazing people are backed up by the entire product dev team who are laser focused on delivering innovation with each and every release. So thank you, dev team, wherever you are out there in the audience. Thank you. That's OK. Give them some applause. So that's our show for today. But it doesn't have to be the end of your developer goodness. Remember, there are over 600 of us here. So look for us in the green shirts that say, I make Tableau. And when you find us, talk with us. We're also doing some great sessions down at the kiosks in the expo hall. So come on down, check them out, and tell us how we can make Tableau even more awesome. Thank you for your attention, and enjoy the rest of TC16. Cheers.